Verizon's not done yet. No, 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 no. We got update number three, dog. <laughs> the updates never stop from Verizon. They're busy. Verizon is a very busy company. So you could say a lot of things about Verizon, but networking, top of the class, man. The cream always rises to the top. So they don't grow in the consumer business. That's their choice. They're still building incredible networks. They're still building out an incredible infrastructure. Upgrading a very expansive tower grid. Tens of billions of dollars every year. They're doing it. Gotta call a spade a spade, man. They're very busy. They're very active. I would argue that they are the busiest and the most active. All right, Verizon lights up 5G UW across North Dakota. North Dakota, folks. Not even South Dakota. North Dakota. Shout out to the fine folks in North Dakota. Wow. Crosby, Columbus, Flaxton, Sherwood, Mahal. This is a lot. Buxton, Valley City. Anybody know where these places are? All right, look. I'm going to move me for a second. If you're from North Dakota, screenshot that. All right, so you know like where those places are. Maybe, possibly, I have no idea. All right, let's read about these upgrades. All right, so the 5G UW, right, which enables people to do so much with their connection, right? You get incredible throughput capabilities. You can obviously get really, really high quality, high resolution video playback, transferring data files basically instantaneously, online gaming, you know, hotspot and tethering data, multiple devices. You know, 5G home internet becomes an option with 5G UW upgrades. There's so many different things you can do when you've got a really legitimate, fast mobile network. All right, so let's see what exactly they did. All right, so the C-band bandwidth, right? The amount of spectrum that they're putting on air for these folks in North Dakota. 100 megahertz of C-band. Now, I want to make something very clear. That is a nice swath of spectrum. That's enough to create some really good capacity, right? You put 100 megahertz of C-band on a 10 gig circuit, magic happens, right? But here's the thing. In, the, in places like North and South Dakota, I'm pretty sure Verizon owns 200 megahertz of C-band. So that spectrum bandwidth of that channel, N77, is going to double to 200 megahertz by the end of the year. That's massive, all right, so they're <laughs> that network is going to be blazing fast. Now, obviously, they've got to upgrade, you know, basically every site in the state or in these states, right, to really, really make it tangible. Uh, but they're working on that. All right, notice here, it says the cell, cell sites can carry 10 times the amount of data. That is the lifeblood of networking, which is the fiber. Those are the fiber circuits that are run to the tower sites. Probably locations where Verizon is building out their MCI fiber, their dedicated fiber business for enterprise, for their tower sites. Right, We're not talking about files. Those are two separate things. Okay, so going big, right? doing it right. They spent a lot of money on the, on the bandwidth. Now it's time to put the fiber circuits to work, hang those antennas and radios, and make this network undeniably the best. Right now, they're they're catching up to the millions of pops on T-Mobile. That's undeniable. But I think Verizon will clo uh, very quickly close the gap, you know, and, and finish up the network pretty quickly. You know, the conversations we're having in 2024 about Verizon's 5G UW, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. Really like that capacitive experience. All right. So the nice thing about these folks is you're not just going to have a mobile network experience that's capacitive. You're also going to have a 5G home internet solution that can replace your old DSL and satellite options, like right off the bat, right? 300 megabits downlink, 20 megabits uplink, right? That's the, the Verizon QoS guaranteed terms of service. Like that's your up to speeds. I don't have any concern that the C-band sites in North and South Dakota are going to have issues being congested, right? Just because they've, they're have they going to have 200 megahertz of spectrum. That's two 100 megahertz bandwidth channels. 
I think it's going to be phenomenal for those people. They can literally disconnect their DSL, disconnect their satellite services. If they have fiber, you know, they might want to keep the fiber, but this at least gives you a price option. What if, what if your fiber provider in North Dakota all of a sudden decided they want to increase your rate by 25%? So you went from like $80 a month to like $95 a month or, or $100 a month or $105 a month. And Verizon's like, hey, you've got our wireless service. Why don't you try our 5G home internet for 25 bucks or 35 bucks? You would try it, right? And I think they have a trial period. We could try it for a couple of weeks, worry free and stuff like that. The uplink, you know, you really can't touch the uplink of fiber. You know, the... The C-band setup, I don't, just based on the plans and the tiers, you know, they're not giving you more than 20 megabit up. Maybe if you got the plus, the Verizon 5G Home Plus option, maybe that gets you to 50 megabit up or something like that. That might be worth looking into. But yeah, the uplink for fiber can't be matched. But if the uplink is just a small piece of what you do, then which is like 95% of users, right? They're, they don't need 100 megabit, 200 megabit uplink. You know, they can get by with 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 uplink. Man, this is good for these people. It is about damn time. Look, I, I don't want to say I told you so because a lot of you agreed with me. So I'm not telling you I told you so. But I said very clearly on this channel, like five years ago, when I first started doing live streams, I said that T-Mobile and Verizon were going to stick it to big cable. And they were going to stick it to the DSL providers who weren't upgrading their networks. They were going to come in and disrupt. Once they got the bandwidth, once they got their towers upgraded and modernized, and they put the bandwidth on air, they were going to offer a fixed wireless access, 5G home internet. Well, at the time, it was they were just building on LTE. But then soon enough to the conversion to 5G, that they were going to offer competitive network experiences that could replace cable and dsl and satellite and here we are today talking about verizon home internet and t-mobile home internet the price is competitive the service is acceptable right in some examples people are telling me it's even more reliable than cox fiber you know so it's not really i told you so but i mean it goes back like 2018 it was we predicted it was going to happen. It, it's, it's not a prophecy. But the writing was on the wall. MS asked the question, do you foresee Verizon deploying some millimeter wave in North Dakota, South Dakota? So here's the thing, MS. As much as I would love to see that happen, maybe a handful of cities. Right? It just doesn't... It doesn't really call for it. There are probably a couple of stadiums like college university, college football stadiums that could use it. There might be a couple of venues, maybe. I don't know if they do some kind of like special annual festivals of some sort. It would make sense for them to do some small cells there or like, you know, doing an LT small cell that also has like, you know, the C-band antennas and then, you know, the millimeter wave nodes. Maybe that makes sense. But I can't really think of more than maybe a handful of locations within those states that would require the bandwidth, right? That a millimeter wave brings to the table. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's more than a handful, and I just don't know about it. You know. But I thought I can think of obviously their state, the state capitals would make sense to have some millimeter wave. I think also. You know, those sport venues would make sense. Maybe where they hold some concerts or, or carnivals or something. I, I'm trying to think of those things. I think also there might be some neighborhoods in some, like, developed suburbs where there's, like, cable coaxial that's junk or expensive, and they could come in and be the insurgent. Like, maybe they could, you know, get access to fiber circuits on the street, connect about a dozen or so nodes within a few neighborhoods, and bring that offer to the table because here's the thing like building the the nodes as long as the city approves the permitting and stuff and verizon's gonna own the site itself the pole and stuff like that i mean they know how to do this owner's economics thing yeah so we'll see we'll see what happens in the dakotas and maybe somebody who's there can kind of give us some feedback as to where they're seeing the c-band getting lit up
there are different ways that you can support the SMT. One of them, obviously, is to rate the video. That helps. You interact with the content, you know, comments and likes and shares and those things. Uh, but if you want to be more directly supportive of your content creators, the way that you do that is with supports like the Buy Me a Coffee link. Uh, you can support us that way. There's also the other, you know, donation type supports. Really what I want to do is grow the communities within Patreon and the YouTube memberships and, and more so the Patreon because I can give you more through Patreon. So if you guys like what the YouTube channel does and you like what it offers, you're looking for a bunch of things like early access videos and additional live streams. You want more of the SMT. That's how you could do it. So I recommend checking us out on Patreon. The link is in the description. But if you don't want to do that, then you can support us lots of other ways. In the description, you've got the coffee link. You've got other stuff. There's ways to support the channel. Of course, if you need service, but you want a good value, you're sick and tired of price hikes, you're looking for a better deal, we have partnered with Mint Mobile. All right, Use our partner link. It's in the description. They just increased all of the data allotments on all their plans. And they didn't touch pricing. So the 4 gig plan went to a 5 gig plan. They kept it 15 bucks. The 15 gig plan, right, used to be a 10 gig plan, right? And they kept it at $20 a month, right? So they added all this value, didn't even touch pricing. This is why we absolutely must support this company. They are doing good things. I mean, you tell me what carrier is doing this. What carrier gives you more? For the same amount of money right all these other companies are raising pricing t-mobile just increased plan rates right their new plans are more expensive verizon is historically known at&t historically known for slapping on increases to fees and additional fees and all those types of things men mobile is different they're different they're giving you more and they're not charging you more right so if you're looking for a second line you want to try the t-mobile network you know, that you're looking for a better value. There are, I can think of a dozen reasons to switch to Mint Mobile. And of course, you can port your number. You can get, you know, phone deals. They'll, they'll like, look at this. Look at this one. It's here at the top, right? We're talking about six months of free service when you buy a phone and get their six-month plan. So you would essentially have a year of service and a phone all on a good deal. Can't beat it. All right, links in the description. Use it. It's our unique uh, partner link, uh, and it, it will support the channel.